The Salesforce Developer Console is a powerful tool, and you might think from its name that it's only geared towards developers, right? Wrong. It's a great feature for Salesforce admins to utilize too. In this video, we'll provide a bit of an introduction to the Salesforce Developer Console, including how it can generate logs in real time, show more detailed error messages, update data issues easily, and more. And a big thank you to both Rachel Garten for the post that inspired this video and this video's sponsor, Salesforce. So let's start off. Let's introduce the console itself. The Salesforce Developer Console is the native Salesforce IDE, or Integrated Development Environment. This essentially means it's a handy user interface that pulls together useful development and debugging tools all in a single place. Think of it as consolidating and extending some of the development and troubleshooting features you usually access via setup. It's capable of a lot, which makes it a pretty versatile tool. But here are just a few of its core capabilities, including the fact that it can generate logs in real time, show more detailed error messages, troubleshoot order of operation issues, show when governor limits are being hit, explore your data quickly, and update data issues on the go easily. So now you know what it does, how do you actually access it? How you access the dev console depends, but once the console opens in its own window, the look and feel is both the same in Lightning and Classic, for those of you who are still on that platform. Now that that's out of the way, let's take a closer look at some of the tool's top features. One of the powerful features of the developer console is the debugging capabilities. Debugging is the action of finding runtime errors in the system. A debug log is a log of what's happening in the system, including error messages, automation that are being triggered, and how close everything is to governor limits. If you've ever scheduled a debug log in setup, you know how frustrating it can sometimes be. You have to go to debug logs, schedule the log, log in as the user you're troubleshooting as, test, log back out, comb through all the logs, I'm sure you know the pain. One of the standout benefits of the developer console is that it automatically starts capturing debug logs as soon as you open it. No need to manually set up or worry about expiring mid-investigation. Logs are generated instantly, so you can quickly identify the relevant entry for the specific action that you are troubleshooting. You can also schedule debug logs for any user. This means you can test scenarios as that user and watch the logs populate in real time. It's a fast, efficient way to diagnose issues and keep your debugging processes moving without interruption. Let's walk through how this works in practice. Imagine a user named Amy reports an error when saving certain account records. Some save without a problem, while others trigger an error. Here's how you can use the developer console to investigate and resolve the issue step by step. Step one, open the console while logged in as your admin user by following the steps outlined earlier. A new window should pop open. Before you try logging in as other users to test, you can test while logged in as yourself to generate logs. This step is pretty easy because all you have to do is open the console and it does the rest for you. We'll explore reading the logs and filtering them in step five. Step three, sometimes you have to troubleshoot as another user because you are unable to recreate an issue as yourself. Here's how to log in as another user, in our case as Amy, to troubleshoot further. Navigate to Amy's user record so you can do two things, get her user ID and log in as her for troubleshooting. In the developer console, click debug and then change log levels. Then scroll down to user tracing for all users, click the add button. From there, a window will appear. Paste in the user ID of the user you want to debug, in our scenario, Amy's ID. If you don't know where to find the user ID, you can get it from the URL of the user record. It will be a 15 character ID and start with 005. Now you're almost there. Change the start date and expiration to the start and end times you want by clicking on the fields, then set your debug level by clicking the add change link. From there, click done. Then make sure that the debug show my current logs only setting is unchecked. You want to see all users' logs when you're troubleshooting another user's actions. Now you are ready to troubleshoot as Amy. Before we go any further, it's evident that the developer console is a great tool for getting the most out of your Salesforce data. 
If you're the kind of person who always wants to get the most out of their Salesforce investment, especially on Service Cloud, then we know you'll love Salesforce Foundations. If you think you've heard it all before, we can assure you that there's more. For one, this powerful tool gives you free access to Agent Force and essential Service Cloud features. With Salesforce Foundations, you gain free access to engage customers with 24 seven service. Neat, right? Foundations will provide you with robust case management and knowledge-based tools and access to Agent Force to let you easily automate low-touch customer interactions, allowing your service teams to focus on high-impact tasks. Already activated Foundations? Well, you can now test out these new Service Cloud features for free. For more information, including a demo, head over to salesforcebend.com forward slash services, which will be linked at the top of the description. Now let's get back to our troubleshooting for Amy. Step four, keep the developer console open and log in as the user you're troubleshooting, which is Amy. The console will still run in your system admin context, so you'll have full access to all logs. Reproduce the issue to generate the logs, and then go to the logs tab and double click the relevant row to open it. Use the status column to spot errors quickly, but don't rely on it alone. Some issues may still be logged even if the status shows success. Step five, logs can be huge and they can be tedious to read through. Thankfully, the developer console lets you filter and search the logs for specific tags, letting you isolate information more easily you'll notice several preset filters and a freeform search bar at the bottom of the log, debug only, means you can show only debug statements, typically in Apex code. The filter and search bar will allow you to type your own freeform text to filter the log, but be careful because it's case sensitive. Lastly, you can customize the columns that you want to view by clicking on the arrow in any column header of the log. Investigate data like a pro with Query Editor. Another way to troubleshoot issues is to check the data. Maybe it's not an issue with automation or user mistakes, but a data problem. Developer Console can also help with that. Step one, follow the steps outlined above to open the Developer Console. A new window should pop open. Select the Query Editor tab. Step three, typing out SQL queries manually can be tedious especially if you're unsure which fields you need. Luckily, the Developer Console lets you browse objects and select fields for your query. Just go to File, Open, choose Objects under Entity Type, select your object, then click Open. Once you have the object open, you'll see a full list of fields, Standard, then Custom, along with the field's data type. Decide which fields you want to query, hold down Control for Windows or Command for Mac, and then select all the fields and then click Query. Step four, to filter, you'll use where followed by criteria. To practice, let's find accounts with the type equals customer direct, then click Execute. Step five, after your query executes, you should see something like this. Let's take a quick tour. Workspace tabs. Like console apps, Developer Console keeps tabs open for everything objects, queries, logs, so you can easily compare or revisit them. Executed query shows the exact query used in that tab for easy reference. Query results displays the output with fields shown in the order you queried them. Actions, refresh queries or edit data directly in the console. Just make sure to include the ID field so you can update records. Access in Salesforce, click a record in your result to open it in Salesforce. Go straight to edit mode or create a new record from the object's new page. And that ends our introduction to the Salesforce Developer Console, including insights as to how it can benefit Salesforce admins. What's your favorite thing about the tool? What would you like to see us cover next? Let us know in the comments below.